Hey guys, welcome back. My kid moved out, finally, so as you see, I'm taking this room and using it for storage. Frees up a lot of room in the shop. So and these are all, uh, all these CRT monitors actually work. Except for this one right here, I'm not sure of if I recall that one didn't work, so I'm going to end up taking that one apart one day and see if I can fix it. Uh, because, I mean, overall the monitor is in really good shape, but all these other CRTs work. And uh, this is just a stack of computers that, you know, I've been uh, just piling up in a the shop there and they've been getting in the way. Uh, some of them, like this uh, G3 iMac right here, I've never even turned on, so I don't know if it works. This one right here, you guys rem might remember from the video, the Gateway 2000, that unfortunately no longer works. And that HP sitting on top there, that little one, uh, that one right there was in a video before, and I still haven't figured out what I want to do with it, along with this Dell E310 right there. Um, but all these other ones here, a lot of these are, are Acer's that uh, I picked up for, I think, like a buck or two each, and I had like 18 of them. I've sold a couple of them already, including to a, a print shop that they were having issues with this Pentium 4 one right here. So I took that in trade and sold them one of those Acer's with a uh, Core 2 Duo in it. So I think that one worked. It just had issues, and I didn't want to deal with it anymore. And... You know, like I said, I just gave them one with a Core 2 Duo on it being that they're a new client. So uh, I think that one right there, we're going to take back in a shop and see if we can do anything with that. Uh, not to get it working for them, but just to see if it's if it's actually, if it works, if it's repairable. And if we can maybe get a, because I think this has got an AGP slot in it. So maybe we can get a GPU in there and, uh, you know, maybe make something that can uh, play older games. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to get that dug out and back in the shop and then we'll set up in there. Alright, so here we are in my little corner of the shop. And I'm going to just pull up a chair and take a seat here. And uh, let's take a look around this thing first. And as you can see, this is an HP uh, Pavilion A3. You, know, you can't see. But this is a Pavilion A350N. Uh, it came with Windows XP. And it's got a Pentium 4 inside with hyper threading. I have no idea what P4 is in here. I, didn't, I know really nothing about this computer. Um, I don't know which, you know, how many drives it's got in here, but it came with a DVD writer and a CD-ROM, it looks like, uh, and a floppy, a media card reader, and then we got some front USB 2.0, a Firewire, and audio inputs on the front here. And there was a sticker here that looks like somebody peeled off. I have no idea what that said, but yeah, nice big power button. Here is the other side with our Windows XP Home Edition COA. If we look on the back, it looks like it does have a, a GPU in it. Uh, probably, uh, probably nothing to write home about, but there it is. Uh, we got an Ethernet card. Um, we got four more USB ports back here. Another FireWire port, Ethernet port, audio, and of course parallel printer port, serial port, and PS2 keyboard and mouse. There's a rear exhaust fan here, and somebody wrote something up there. I have no idea what that is. Um, here it says HP Pavilion A000. So that's kind of Odd, but let's take a look inside this thing now. All right, so we've got a big fat old hard drive in here. This is uh, this is all IDE. Now it looks like there's a couple SATA ports on there. Uh, there's four sticks of RAM in there. I have no idea how much RAM is in it. There's our uh, little stock Intel cooler on there with a cooler master fan. Um, here's our GPU. So let me grab a screwdriver and I think we'll, we're going to start. Uh, well, before I do that, this thing doesn't look ridiculously filthy in here. So I'm going to plug it in. We're going to hook it up to a monitor and a keyboard and see what we got. All right. So I've got everything hooked up to it except for power. So I'll add some power to it, turn it on. Or well, it's going to turn on by itself, I guess. There we go. Find the power button here. Okay, so it seems like it starts to go and then shuts off. I mean, it, it did that twice and then just shut off for good. Try it one more time. Yep. All right, so that's obviously the issue with this. You get a chance to use the keyboard. So.
So, I think maybe we're going to start right here with the CPU. Can't seem to get it unhooked. There we go. All right, and the CPU looks like it came out with the cooler. Let's see if I can see what P4 just actually is here. All right, it's 2.8 gigahertz. Uh, let me grab another CPU. Let's see, what one do we want to try here? Let's just try a little, little one here, little guy, a 1.5 gigahertz. All right, so we got a little guy we're going to try here. Because this CPU may still be good, but the easiest thing to do right now is just to swap it out. All right, round two. All right, so it's not the CPU. And I don't think it's RAM either. But we'll pull a bunch and see. Looks like we got 256 megabyte sticks of uh, PC2700. Yeah, they're all 256 so far. All right. Yeah, that didn't help either. I... See, after a while, it just turned itself back on by itself. Um, I'm going to plug the power here. And I think... Want to unplug power to everything else? Let's try this again. I don't think it's going to help, but. Alright. And I can't pull a GPU and run it without a GPU um, and expect to see a display because there's no onboard video on here geforce 2 mx so we got a you know just a crappy little gpu in it so i want a different agp card yeah i didn't think that was it either but all right so let's try a different power supply. Yeah, I've got an Antec here, 430 watt, with a 20 plus 4 pin power. You see, you could break, you know, with four pins off. Now oh, that's better. All right, one good thing is it hasn't shut off again. Bad thing is I got no uh, no video here at all. And I don't know if that AGP card that I put in there is any good or not. That's a, uh, oh, it just shut off. That's a TNT2 M64. But yeah, and it did, it ended up eventually shutting off. So I think there's more issues here. Than it seems. Now I did take a quick look at the capacitors, and they all look good, but that doesn't always mean anything. Let's uh, try this again. All right. Yeah, if there's an issue that's not 
uh, CPU or anything related. There's an issue with the motherboard here. So this looks like another one that's going to be uh, is getting stripped out for parts, unfortunately. It would have been nice to have gotten this thing running. Well, you can't win them all, right? Let's see what else we got. Up next, we got another HP Compact. This is a business class machine here. Uh, I'll lay it down. Uh, it's got XP Pro COA on it, but also uh, 7 Home Premium. And it looks like this is a DC 5700. And let's see, what does it say here? 641. Okay, so this probably has a Pentium 4 641 in it, which is a Cedar Mill CPU. Okay, let's take a look at the back real quick here. Uh, you see the power supply here. Uh, six USB ports, actually. Ethernet. Uh, video out. So we have onboard video here. PS2. Um, mouse and keyboard. Uh, serial port and parallel printer port. And we do have some slots here. It looks like there was might have been something in there that was pulled out. Uh, this thing rattles around when you move it. And if we take a look at the front. On the front, you can see the cover's bent. Well, we got a DVD-ROM, a blank for a floppy, a couple more, P, you know, a couple more USB ports, uh, audio jacks, and a power button here. And it looks like there's a fan right there. But yeah, the cover looks a little kinked right there, so I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, it looks pretty grungy too. Alright, this doesn't even really have a graphics slot in it. It's got a add to slot in it, which looks like a PCI Express slot, but uh, that's a card where you can just add additional monitors to it. But it is SATA. There's a power supply in here, so let's go ahead and fire this thing up. I, this is one that, you know, probably won't be able to do much with it, but uh, we're going to fire it up anyways and see if it works. Alright, so we now got it power and everything hooked up to it. Let's see if it'll even turn on here. And right away it starts beeping with an error. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. Yeah, this is another one of those little modular deals where you can pretty much just take the whole thing apart with you know, a little to no effort. Push a button here, pull a lever there, and practically comes apart on its own. And you see how nasty that is. This thing is disgusting. All right, so just pulled all the RAM out of it. There's two one gig sticks here, PC25300 that are they're marked Lenovo. And then there's these two little baby sticks, and you can see the height difference in those. They're about half height baby RAM. And these are, this doesn't really say... Yeah, these aren't marked, but they're complete two completely different sticks even from each other. One's got Kingston, one's got uh Alpita. This is single sided, this is double sided. So I'm gonna leave those two out. I'm gonna put one of these back in and we'll see what happens because that sounds like a RAM issue. Alright, so here we are with one stick of RAM installed in it. Let's see what happens. There we go, that's much better. So yeah, this thing definitely had a RAM issue. That is just some nasty, nasty looking dust there. And with that add to slot in there, there's really not a lot. I mean, you could add a small PCI card to it, but I mean, other than that, like I said, there's not really much I can do with it. But it is interesting that uh let's see f10 is for setup on here it is interesting though that it actually works now system information processor type okay so and this one's been upgraded obviously too core 2 uh duo 4300 i mean it is up and working i mean i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do with it it's definitely been upgraded though because the sticker on it did say uh you know, that came with a Pentium 4641, which is socket 775 as well. 
So um, I'm not surprised this was upgraded. It looked like somebody put RAM in it and uh, they had something so they had an issue with the RAM. So we'll see. Maybe this one will just come part for parts right at this point. I don't know. All right, let's see what else we got. All right, up next is this Compact Presario. This is a SR5030NX. Uh, came with a Pentium 4 641 again. So we're seeing a lot of these 641s, it seems. Um, onboard uh, Intel graphics, uh, 950. Uh, one gig of RAM, a 160 gig hard drive, and uh, DVD CD burner, light scribe burner. And yep, that's still in there too. Uh, it says Pentium 4 inside. Windows Vista Basic is what this came with. Um, pretty stylish little design here, I guess. Yeah, you got your audio jacks and two USB 2.0s in the front. If you look on the side here, you got a little air intake right here. Um, Vista Home Basic sticker there. And you can tell the motherboard is in here upside down. You know, already they flipped it. Um, because your uh, I.O. is down here. And it's just PS2 keyboard and mouse. Uh, VGA out. Two USB ports. Ethernet audio is all that's in the back. And it looks like there's a uh, uh, modem up here. So, this thing looks a little bent right here as well. So, let's go ahead. Let's pop this cover off and take a look on the inside. Yeah, not really sure that that was bent. I think it was just put on crooked. Looking on the inside here, this thing looks a bit disassembled. The hard drive cage is not only out, but it's bent all wonky. The CPU cooler is laying on the floor. The CPU is still in it, though. 24 pin plug on the motherboard with a 20 pin connector on it, which, you know, I mean, I've seen that OEMs before, so it's not that big of an issue. Uh, I see two SATA ports there, and of course, ID floppy. It does have a PCI Express slot in it, but I don't know if it even works. So, I think what I'm going to do is just throw a little paste on here or a cooler back on. I'll turn on to see if it works. This thing looks pretty abused, actually. So I'm not really sure what the outcome will be. I'll squirt a little goo on it, and we'll find out. There's chunks of plastic falling out of here. I don't know what the hell happened to this thing. But let's see if it at least will work. And let's see if it does anything. All right, there we go. It works. Pentium 4, 3.2 gigahertz. Just went into turbo mode. All right, let's shut it down. That fan's getting awful loud. So, not really sure what to do with this one here. Um, you know, it's got the Pentium 4. We could put a PCI Express graphics card in it. Uh, it's limited to two sticks of RAM, but that's no big deal, I guess, if you were to put, like, Windows XP on it. Somebody ripped that, power, that hard drive cage out of there. This is all bent to shit. Actually, that might not be too bad. Not a fan there if this thing has any ventilation whatsoever, which I'm not sure that it does. No, there's no ventilation on this. Oh, there's yeah, there's some ventilation there. So I wonder if it would be worth cutting that out for a, where they hog where they hack that up, cut that out for a fan, and uh, put an intake fan here with your exhaust fan there. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? And of course, I just turned it back on. I don't know. I'm leaning towards just fixing it up as it is. And uh, maybe I can just sell it cheaply, you know. But um, I'm not opposed to making a sleeper out of it, too. So, uh, you guys, let me know. Give me your thoughts on that one. All right, let's see what else we got. All right, so it looks like we've got another little uh, business class machine here. This is the HP Compact. Um, 
see what does it say on here. It's a DC 7700. Um, can't really tell what's in it from the numbers on there, but it's got a Windows XP Pro key, and it looks like it it was uh, redone with uh, Windows 7 Home Premium. Uh, it's got the name Esther on it, so I think that's what we're going to call this one is Esther. So let's see what Esther's got in her caboose here. Um, Esther looks like she's taking a little bit of bit of a hit here, but um, we got six USB ports, Ethernet, uh, our video out, parallel printer port, serial port, two audio ports, and PS2 keyboard and mouse. This is another one of those uh, nice modular one side. Just got to figure out how this one opens. Looks like it's already partly open. And you can just push these tabs. Yep. Yeah, push the tabs and the whole front comes forward. Like that. And on the front you see we've got two USBs and a couple audio. Front facing fan. Alright, let's take a look inside. Got a clear shroud and uh this has got the fan here. The fan blows through the shroud, and as you see, it diverts part of it over the power delivery there, and then the rest goes through the CPU, which got a pretty stout looking little cooler on it for an OEM. And you've got a, another fan on the back, so you're pushing air in this way, and it's pulling it through, blowing it across your uh, chipset here. And this one does have a PCI Express slot, it's not an add to slot, thank God. Yeah, we've seen we've got a little heat sink down here, so yeah, this thing is pretty pretty hooked up. I see there's no RAM in it whatsoever. And this is another one, I don't know if this one works or not. This is another one that was just dropped off here. All of these that I've, that I've got here have been pretty much dropped off. Um, you know, people either find them or whatever and they're like, hey, you want this? I'm like, hell yeah, I'll take it. Because you never know. You know what, you can do some neat stuff with it. But let me find some RAM, throw some RAM in here and we'll get this thing hooked up and see if it actually powers on. Alright, so we have everything hooked up to it. We have keyboard uh, power and our monitor hooked up to it. So let's see if this thing will power on. Well, it sounds like it is, yep. Nope. Oh, had a screen for a second there. So let's go into setup on here. Yeah, this one works too. System information. Ah, Pentium D, 3 gigahertz. Running a bit warm, I imagine. That's one of those, uh, I think it's a 4000 RPM fan that they put in these. Yeah, it's really got some air pushing out the back. Yep, so it, she's overheating. But it worked. Let's kill the power to it. Now let's see if we can get it to run a little bit longer here. Let me get the uh, I'll get the heat sink off and add some paste to it and see if uh, see if it'll fire up again and stay running. So that was like barely screwed on there at all. That pace is pretty fucking nasty. The CPU is clean, there's not a speck of paste on it. So let's throw some on there and see what happens. This is actually a nice little freaking heat sink here. I wonder if that would fit onto a regular regular uh, socket 775 system. I'd like to test that out against a regular uh, regular cooler. Alright. Alright, I think we're ready to go. Let's see if it'll stay running longer this time.
Yeah, just said all kinds of shit on there. Field replaceable unit and some I couldn't see what it was, but uh yeah, let's restart it, see if we can get back into setup here. Was it F ten? Alright, English system information. Yeah, Penny D three gigahertz. I just threw one stick of one gig RAM in there. So that one seems to work well now. Um, the fan hasn't even kicked on, so the fact that the, the pace was shit and that cooler was really loose on there uh, is why it the fan's ramped up and then it shut itself down. Seems like he's got a pretty substantial speaker in the front here too for a for a PC speaker. Um, this is something maybe we can do something with. Unfortunately, it takes a low profile card. It doesn't have um, you know like a riser and then a, a horizontal slot here to put a, the GPU in any other way. But um, I have to see. I don't think I've really got anything. Oh wait a minute. I lie. I do have. Oh. I've got a low profile card here and I believe this is a HD 5450 but I don't have the I might have the low rise bracket somewhere if I can find a bracket I might just use this I'll have to look and see what I can find but um anyways this one works I'm gonna set this this one aside I definitely want to see if I can do something with this one here um, this one's got a decent decent setup in it here so maybe just maybe all right let me see what else I can find all right next up we've got a Lenovo Think Center M9935 I'm not sure if that's the model number or not but this is a pretty weird looking tower as you see it's uh, just got an AMD business class sticker on the front of it uh, two USB ports and audio um, looks like our lights right here, power hard drive lights, power button, uh, DVD multi-burner. Looks like it's got a simple push button to open the case. And if we look at the back, I can look down in there and I don't see a, a heat sink and there's no power supply in it. There's no rear fan, even though the little nubbies are here for it. Um, but we've got six USB ports, Ethernet, audio, uh, VGA out, uh, DVI out parallel printer port and PS2 keyboard and mouse. We also got a um, serial port just stuck over here. And on this side just a Windows Vista business OEM sticker on it. And this thing is pretty weird looking if you look at the top here. You can see the front sticks up higher than the top. It's almost like it's got a handle on it right there so that's kind of weird. But let's take a look inside and see how bad this thing really is. Hmm. All right. Well, I wouldn't really say bad. Not like gutted. Power supply is gone. All the uh, hard drives gone. There is a cooler in here. It was just laying on the ground. That's a pretty interesting looking cooler. Uh, kind of reminds me of those air gap intakes. And it's even angled here, so that's that's kind of a weird looking cooler. Uh, socket, what does it say? AM2? I think it's a socket AM, yeah, socket AM2. Um, but we do have PCI Express slot, four RAM slots. Uh, I see one, two, three, four SATA ports. So this one, this one, I, I, I'm not. I'm not really confident about this one work and the way it's been gutted. So, but let me find a CPU and uh, we'll find out. All right, we're all ready to go. Got the monitor hooked up to a keyboard, uh, roof mounted power supply. So, we shall see. I've got everything hooked up, ready to go. I just got to switch the power supply on and try and find the power button here. Or maybe I don't need to. Well, the fan is spinning on the CPU. And we got a beep. And, whoa. 
error system fail system fan fail device configuration change so can I get into setup here Holy oh, shit, it works. I just threw a iPhone 64 X2 5000 plus and uh, one stick of one of uh, I think it's one gigabyte of DDR2 in there. So system fan failure that might just be uh, case fan. All right, yeah, it's going through a whole ton of shit here. I'm going to restart this again. Apparently I don't need a power button for this one. Let's see if I can get into the setup here. Maybe the system fan fail. There we go, but we're in setup. Alright, let's take a look here. And so we've got a Lenovo, we know that. Um, Devices advanced CPU setup. Well, it tells you all about your CPU, your multiplier, and all that. Of course, you can't change any of it. Um, doesn't really tell you much about the system in here, though. You can tell this is set up for security. This is definitely a business class machine as well. All right, so this little thing works here, actually. I'm, that's pretty surprising. I wasn't expecting it to the way that it looked like it's been pretty much salvaged and picked apart. But um, it, it does have a PCI Express slot in it. Uh, the motherboard just says Lenovo L-A780 Revision 1.1. But there's two PCI slots as well, four RAM slots and four SATA ports. So this uh this one might actually make a decent little XP machine or Vista depending on what uh, GPU you want to put in there I mean if it's a DX10 GPU you don't want to go with Vista um, I mean this would probably run this would run Windows this would even run Windows 10 actually I've ran it on these uh, Athlon 64 X2s before and it runs it pretty decent uh, I run Windows 7 well there's a lot of op a lot of options with this system right here and it's another one with a pretty substantial PC speaker in the front. But, yeah, all right, so I, I think that's all the ones that we're going to go through today. Um, I already know a couple are getting scrapped out, and a couple have options open. So, um, you guys let me know what, what your thoughts are, what, what you think for that, you know, for the other one, for this one here, what you'd like to see. Uh, happen with these and um, I mean all I can say is I'll take it into consideration I might make for a decent video you know so all right you guys take care and we will see you on the next one